All right, guys, before I get started, I like to take time to just let you know and understand that I am not an investment advisor. Anything that I do here today is for educational purposes only. If you decide to take upon anything that I am showing you today, please do understand that I am not an investment advisor. OK, so just remember to consult with your own investment advisor so they can help you to understand and know the relevant risk factors associated with trading any market. All right. So let's get on with this thing. But before we get on with this, I always want to give you some word of encouragement. And this comes from Isaiah 60, 22. It says, when the time is right, I, the Lord, will make it happen. There may be times that you long to see something fulfilled in your life and you become impatient. But we must patiently wait for God's timing. OK, he controls history and he weaves together all our lives into his plan. So do not give up on your dream, even when it feels like there's no possibility of it coming true. All right. Because continue to believe in God, continue to walk by faith, continue to trust and know that when the time is right, the Lord will make it happen for you. God bless you, my brother and sisters. Now we're going to get started. But before I get started with this, I want to show you one thing, guys. Look at this video here, 1,000 views, 98 likes. So that means less than 10% of the people like my video. So am I wasting time? No one really likes my stuff that I'm putting out. So if you do like it, please let me know. All right. Because sometimes you start to feel like, hey, I'm just wasting my time here. But I just uh, would like to know if you guys do like what you see and even if you don't. So, again, this video got close to 2000 views at that point. And again, still less than 10 percent. So that's not very good. All right. So I'm just hoping that you guys would like my video if you like it. Subscribe to my station. And also. Please do click those notifications because that can help you to understand and know when I put out another video, right? All right, guys, so this is what we're going to be talking about. We're going to be talking about ICT breaker block smart money concept versus Williams fractal bounce. OK, I'm going to explain this to you, but first I'm going to explain to you what this ICT breaker block is. If you don't know about ICT, he's um, one of the well known traders on um well one well-known education educators on youtube as far as when it comes to some of this um trading concepts so i'm gonna break down something that he teaches and then break down something that a lot of people that study with me already know this fact um ict explains this breaker block as follows so price creates this short-term low all right and that short term low is violated. Price pushes down to the support and resistance level. Price breaks this point a high. All right. And it creates market structure shift right here. This is a change of structure um, violating this previous high here. So now we're looking for price to return to this previous high. And then at this level, we're looking for price to move high because at this level, there's orders that are sitting here looking to be mitigated and this is where we look for the market to pull back to and then the confirmation of the breakers when price starts to move away from this level all right so that's just a quick analysis of how he explains it uh what he's talking about um let's talk about the bearish side so we just looked at the bullish side the bearish breaker is pretty much the same but it's as follows. So price creates this short term high right here. And that short term high is violated as price pushes up to this resistance level. All right. And then price breaks the low at point A. Once price breaks this low, it returns back to this low again because there's liquidity at this level. All right. Sell side liquidity. OK, so that's why this market is pushing back to this level. There's orders here. And the market pushes back to this level. 
and then once the market pushes back to this level we look for the market for this level to hold and look for the market to push back to the downside all right so that's just a quick analysis of it but along with that there's something that um pretty much that i like to show you guys and teach you guys i've been teaching this for quite a long time so we're going to talk about it really quickly it's my main point here almost looks like the same thing right if we go backwards it looks pretty much like the same thing but i want to talk about this chart this chart is where we see fractals all right now first of all i'm going to tell you one thing i'm going to break it down but first i'm going to give you a bigger analysis of it this is also we're talking about ichimoku concepts concepts and ichimoku waves so Ichimoku consists of six waves, and those wave structures are the I wave, the V wave, N wave, P wave, Y wave, um, S wave. I believe I said them all there. Um, fundamental waves are one of the fundamental principles of Ichimoku, right? A price that starts to rise will not turn down until it completes an N wave, and price that has started to fall will not turn upward until it has completed N waves, all right? Intermediate waves are the waves within the N wave, are the waves in the process of completing the N wave. So today we're going to be focused on the S wave, which is also a fractal bounce trade. That's what I want to talk about. In that fractal bounce trade and S wave, we're going to compare that to the ICT breaker block. There's really not much of a difference. Okay, so the S wave is shown on the slide here in the blue this is shown as the s wave and it's no it's the s wave is known as a intermediate wave because it does it it's not a complete wave at this point um the complete waves would be the n wave so this would be an intermediate wave so after creating a high fractal at point a and violating that high it's lowered to the value of a and this value becomes support and resistance all right, it becomes support that was resistance. Again, same thing as what we as um, ICT talks about the breaker block. We're pulling back to that structure high right here. We violate structure, and then we pull back the structure. We're pulling back to this structure point because this is the fractal area, the fractal level. All these highs are going to be based off of fractals. There's going to be a fractal here, a fractal there, a fractal here. Every move here starts and ends with a fractal. And there's no way of, around it, no way of, out of it. So this move to this move started with a fractal, ended with a fractal. 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 So therefore, we like to see the market come back to this fractal and bounce. It's the fractal bounce trade that we call it. All right. And I've been teaching this to people for quite a long time. And it pulls back to this structure again because same concept. There's liquidity at this level. There's orders are sitting at this level. The market looks to mitigate these at this level. So the market pulls back to this level. It's not going to happen all the time, but you're going to see this happen quite a bit. All right. So one thing that I want to make sure that you understand. So what the the fractal bounces is um, considered valid once we see price pull away from that level. And I'm going to draw out some things here. But if price doesn't fall away from the pull away from this level, we always want to set our target for this upper high here, this previous structure level, because that's where we look for the market to come to. And this level is also fluctuation, a fluctuation level. It's the two level. I call it the two level because when we look at the market, we say one, two, three, and we're shooting for four. Our target is four. So when we get into the trade at this structure level down here from the fractal bounce we're looking to shoot for target four i'm going to show you how to find this target in a little bit but also another main concept here and another main thing to remember is that if we don't violate this high here then we're going to get caught in some other kind of wave which could be a p wave or a y wave all right so we would get a p wave and then the market would either break higher or it could break lower. This would be your P wave, and it's gonna be an intermediate move. 
the the um, fundamental move is the N wave, and I'm going to show you it really quickly. You could see it on your charts. It's just this wave right here. It's this wave here, creating N waves all throughout the market. So that's what you're looking at, okay? Now let's move on. So in the opposite direction, we have a S wave again, but we're, we're concerned about these fractal levels. Again, fractal here, fractal here, fractal here, fractal here, fractal here, fractal here. Notice the main concept also, we're violating these bear fractals. And yes, these are bear fractals, and I'll tell you why. We're violating these bear fractal lows. That means the market is bearish. But when we're talking about this um, fractal bounce trade or this S wave trade, which is Ichimoku, the S wave trade. And again, the S wave is shown in blue. All right. So the S wave basically shows this structure right here. And it pulls back to this level, this A level. Pulls right back to that A level. That's where the S wave is created. Once it pulls back all the way to that level it's created at that point. All right. And that's where we look to get into the trade. So you could call this a S wave trade, a bullish S wave trade and a bearish S wave trade, or I just call it a fractal bounce trade because we are bouncing on this lower fractal where this liquidity is market pulls back up there, mitigates this level and then drops to the downside. Okay. Orders up here, traders getting trapped, all kinds of things happen in this area where people get stuck and caught up in the market. And I don't want to make this video too long, so I need to get moving. Um, all right. So again, you could see the structure now on a real chart. Remember I told you about the N waves. All right. So there you go. And then at the top, we, we may always, always see, we may see a P wave or a Y wave structure. Just like you talk about um, when you're talking about uh, Wyckoff and you're, caught, you're talking about accumulation and distribution. Well, the accumulation and distribution with Ichimoku is going to be these intermediate wave structures, which is going to be at the top or bottom could be either this Y wave or this P wave that we're talking about. But I'm not going to get into that. That's not part of this what this lesson. So look at here. This is where this fractal is. This is a fractal and I'm going to tell you why it's a fractal later. But this is a bullish fractal. Many people contemplate and tell me that I'm wrong. This is not a bullish fractal. It's a bearish fractal. It's a down fractal. It's not a down fractal. It's not a bearish fractal. It's a bullish fractal. And this is a structure level. This is the bearish fractal down here. And I'll talk about how the fractals develop. But at this fractal level, the market violated the level like we talked about right there. Then the market pulls right back down into this level. But look what it does here. It traps traders here because, first of all, what, what's happening is this, this is basically like a spring. All right. So this is one of the concepts taught in, um, from, from Wyckoff. So this is really a spring. And it's like a spring basically because... What's happening here, it's a price move below the support level of this um, area here. The market moves down very quickly and rapidly and then moves right back up through the range again, trapping these bear, trade, bear traders that are trying to jump on the trade here because they see a big bearish engulfing candle and then all the novice traders see the market moving and think it's a good thing. Jump in anywhere in here. And the market goes right back away. All right. And then it continues to go. These traders are all trapped now. Trap traders. This is known as a spring or a bear trap. All right. And so at this level, like I told you, this is where a lot of games are played. A lot of things happening. And this is where you need to be watching out. And this is where you need to be trading. And this is the thing that at this level, institutional traders know that 
you're you have your stop losses here so they're coming down hunting you out and then boom going the other way and they want to trap you to get into the trade the wrong direction but you should realize the structure of the market you're not breaking the lower structure so you're continuing to be bullish so you shouldn't even think about taking that short trade at this time you should be thinking about a long trade so then the market violates well here it also came back to this fractal level right here all right but I didn't draw this one out. But again, you could see it came back to that fractal level, pushed higher. Then you could see again this fractal level here. This is a fractal level. These are fractal levels right here. The market came back to the fractal level and then pushed higher. This is another fractal level here and probably a fractal level up here. All right. And then you have these fractal lows. But that's what the market does. And that's what the S wave is. That's what the fractal bounce trade is. So basically it's the pretty it's pretty much the same thing as that breaker block that ICT talks about. So all we have is the market creating that high structure and violating it but pulling back to it then creating this high structure, violate this high structure right here, violate and then pull back up to this level, coming back to this structure here, market drops back down. And boom. It moves in in waves also. So you can see how the market does. It's not anything that I can make up because it's stuff that really happens. And this is part of Ichimoku concepts also. All right. So here again, this is where we see this fractal level. And then the market pulls back to this level. Now, let me tell you what happened here. This is a bearish fractal bounce. All right. Because we're bouncing on the bear fractal. And we're going in the bearish direction. A lot of traders would think to get long here. Let me show you where. But this is where traders are going to be wrong. So you don't see anything from the right from this point over. All right. But you see this big candle right here. This is where you jump in the market. All right. You're now a trap trader because look what happens immediately. All right. So you know what that is? That's an up thrust. It's the opposite of a spring. It's a price move above the resistance level. All right. And it's a quick reversal. And then trapping traders and the market goes the opposite direction. It's a bull trap known as a bull trap. So, again, you should have never been thinking about long just because you see that break there. That break is just a, a trap right there. And it's a test of the level to get liquidity. It's also trapping traders. And one thing that has to happen for institutional traders, they have to buy to sell and they have to sell to buy. So they buy this up, getting you caught in the trade and then they sell the, right, the direction they want to go. They have to buy to sell because they're trapping you. All right. And then here's the thing about this. Also, um, we never broke bull structure. Right. We never broke bull structure. So why would you even think about going long? You need to really break that bull structure. And at this point, if you did break bull structure, you, you're not thinking about trading in here. You're thinking about trading when it comes down to this level. Because it comes back to this fractal level or else if it creates some other fractal levels within that point. Right. But you once you violate this structure here, then you realize that the market is now bearish i mean bullish sorry turned around and went the opposite direction i gotta watch what i say bearish and bullish because some people yell at me if i say sorry i messed up <laughs> um and here again let me go backwards one time and again if we talk about ichimoku concepts the s wave is this right here the s wave is there we complete the level right here and then we pull away from the level and now we have an N wave. The S wave turned into an N wave. All right. So we went from um, intermediate to fundamental. And that's all it is. All right. Again, you could see the same thing happening. This is a fractal right here. 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 This m might be a fractal later. Need two more candles to decide, but let's call that a fractal. This is a fractal right here. This is a fractal right here. Notice 
the market's not going higher than any of these fractal levels. All right. So therefore, the market is violating the bear fractal levels, which means you should be short thinking short on your trade up opportunities. So as the market pulls back up, as the market violates this level here and then pulls back up into the level, that's when you want to get short. All right. So I have a tool that I use and it just colors the bars for me when I get that momentum that I need and it colors them red, gives me that bearish momentum, colors them green. I know I'm bullish momentum. And then when I want to get into that trade at the proper time, now I, the, the best thing that's going to get you into these types of trades is price action. Price action can't be beat. All right. But other traders aren't as good as getting into the market off of these levels and, and they don't see when to get in might get in too early or too late, and then that helps you. All right, stop loss up there. You can see the big trade that it made. So let's talk about what a fractal is because many people tell me that I'm wrong about what a fractal is and if it's bullish or bearish. I'm gonna prove it to you what it is right now. This right here, this diagram is taken from Bill Williams' book, Trading Chaos on page 138. In the book, it says that a fractal consists of a minimum of five bars. The middle bar must have a higher high or lower low than the two preceding bars. All right. And I'm showing you this because many people dispute me what a bull fractal is and a bear fractal. This is taken from Bill Williams Chaos Trading. And he's showing you that this is an up fractal. Up means bull. This is an up fractal right here. Up means bull. And this is a down fractal right here. This means bear. I call these bear and bull fractals. This is a bull fractal going this way. And the reason that I believe he calls it like this. So here's what traders call and here's what traders do. He calls these bull fractals because the way Bill Williams trades this is he trades the break of that level. So once this level is broken, he's going long. So he's calling it bull. And if the market was going down, he trades the break of this level. So he calls this bear. So he's trading down. I pretty much am doing the same thing, but I don't trade these breaks. I trade when it comes back to the bull fractal. I don't trade the break, but I trade when it comes back to the bear fractal. Okay. So just want to make sure you guys understand that. And I'm going to give you even more evidence right here. Um, this right here is taken from Bill Williams book, Trading Chaos on page 136. And you could see what it says in figure eight. One notice that a pattern shows a pristine fractal, which is this one right here. And then also you could see it says um, this sets up an up fractal designated by this right here, which is this which means up. He just told you this was an up fractal. And then he says pattern B is also an up fractal, but the same formation also creates a down fractal, which is shown by this. And that's showing a down fractal. All right. A down fractal. And I call this a bear fractal. So that one. So now when you watch my videos and you tell me that I'm calling these fractals wrong, please do some education and then tell me I'm doing it wrong. All right. I never put junk out. I always make sure I know what I'm talking about before I put anything out. And I've been studying Bill Williams for quite a while. I've been studying fractals for quite a while. So pretty much know that that's a bull and bear fractal. All right. So looking at the a real chart, this is the Preston fractal. But again, you could see this is a fractal because this is a bear fractal because it has two higher lows on each side of it. It, can, it needs to have five candles to create a fractal. All right. And that's what you have there. Five candles. And also on this one, you have this can be this is the bear, fra the bull fractal, because you have two higher high, two lower highs. On each side of this um, candle. So these two, one, two, one, two. And this is the center candle. All right. So that's how you determine the fractal. 
Um, let's look at a couple more fractals real quick. Again, this is a bull fractal. And actually, yeah, this is the bull fractal. And I didn't make this pattern. It's already there. So it kind of looked like this one's higher than that. And if it was, this would not be a fractal. But since they're, it's saying that this is the highest fract, the highest high, then it has two lower highs on each side. Therefore, creating that bull fractal, what we're looking for the market to violate that level and then come back to that level. There's a lot of liquidity at these levels, a lot of support and resistance at these levels. All right. The market comes back to mitigate these levels. Let's look at the bear fractal. This is a bear fractal. Again, this is the lowest high, the lowest low. And there's two higher lows on each side of this middle frac bar. Middle bar have a higher low on each side, therefore creating a bear fractal. All right, that is a bear fractal. Again, we can see this pattern. Now we can see the N wave pattern and we can also see that a move starts with a fractal and ends with a fractal. At the fractal level is support and resistance. At the fractal level is liquidity. At the fractal level is support and resistance. At the fractal level is liquidity. Mitigate. Mitigate. You can see. All right, so that's what these fractals are very relevant. So a lot of traders call these opposite than what they really are because what they're figuring is they're trying to trade this bull fractal and calling it a down fractal, a bear fractal, because they wait till they see this fractal develop, which is after this candle closes, then they get into the trade and think that it's a bear fractal because they're going short. All right, well, half the move is over already. And that's not the proper way to trade the fractal. And that's why they call it bull and bear fractals because they're trading it the wrong way. All right. So these fractals also create liquidity levels as because there's buy stops and sell stops placed at these levels. So in this case, we see buy side liquidity created at the um, fractal high levels. The bull, factor, the bull fractals create um, resistance levels where buy stops are placed, which will stop profitable trades and trap entering longs. All right. So you can see here. Buy side liquidity on these fractal levels. I, call, I make zones with these wicks. So you got buy side liquidity at these levels. We're looking for the market to pull back up to these. Not on here. We're not looking for the market to pull to the uh, these upper fractals. That's not what we're looking for. I'm going to explain that later. Um, but this is where you will see liquidity grabs and traders getting trapped. So I can show you real quick right here. We're not necessarily saying pull up to this level. Now, this is what what it is. We're more so looking to, to catch these lower levels. All right. This is where we're looking for the market to pull back to. All right. For the sell side liquidity. All right. But just looking at this at this chart, this is buy side liquidity on these upper fractals. And you can see right here, this again was another trap right here. OK. And then the market drops to the downside. Big candle getting traders caught up, catching all this liquidity up here. So this is basically a liquidity grab. Market comes up, grabs that liquidity, traps traders long, and then drops to the downside. All right, so that I don't trade these levels like that. I look to wait to see the market bounce off of these lower levels. If it violates the lower level, then I'm going to mark these levels and look for, um, if I'm depending on what direction I'm look going, I'm going to look for a sp uh, spring or up thrust, and then I'm going to trade back in the direction of the market because. In order for me to trade the opposite direction, right? What I want to see, 
This is a bearish market. We're violating these levels, the low fractals. We're not violating the bull fractals, right? So this is a bearish market. If we're violating, so if you're going to say this is a changing structure, it needs to violate structure and it needs to go higher than structure and then come back to structure and then continue higher. But we don't see that. What we see is coming up to structure, trapping traders and continuing the direction of the market that it was already in. A lot of novice traders get stuck right here and get caught in the wrong direction and you're caught. It moves away quickly. I don't want to waste too much time on this stuff. So hopefully it's helping you guys. Hopefully you could see the trades. I'm going to move quicker. But here you see these fractals. These bear fractals create sell side liquidity. All right. They create support levels. Sell stops are placed here. Profitable longs get trapped. And entering shorts. All right. Sell side liquidity. So here we can see right here. This is what I just was talking about. The structure of the market has been violated here and for sure here. So now we're bearish. All right. So the market's violating the bear fractal. So the market is bearish. So bear structure, we should be looking for shorts. Again, people are going to mark these double bottoms and look for long. So what's happening at this level? Basically, when price retraces back to this level, traders are looking at this as a double bottom. So traders, like I talked about earlier, looking to trade these double bottoms to the upside now. So traders are looking at this as the double bottom support level, looking to buy at this level. So we get a price action signal with this doji indecision candle. And traders place buy stops above this doji. Not understanding the structure of the market, traders are expecting the market to bounce at this level. So if, like I just explained about the structure, in order for this to be bullish, you need to be breaking bull structure. Fractals create the structure. And if you're not violating bull structure, then you're bearish and you should continue looking for short trades. So in order for me to trade, I can miss this trade because I'm going to wait for the market to come up through this level back and then trade. But if you don't trade like that, then you're going to get trapped up here. So let's see what goes on with this type of action. So the next candle opens, triggers the longs because traders were looking to go long here. They had their entries above this level, probably had their stop losses below the doji. They get triggered into the trade and then the market drops hard. Look at this big giant outside bar. These traders are trapped for good. They're trapped. There's no way to get out of this trade unless you jump out now with the loss because this might move down quickly. All right. So some traders might get out quickly, quickly, but you know how retail traders are. They're going to hold on as long as possible blowing accounts. So then now, since we already talked about this level, I told you, you don't need to look for a long here. So here's how we would trade this. We would wait for the market to pull back to this level. All right. So now that price has reached the bear fractal, there's liquidity at this level from the traders that were trapped needing to mitigate these losses and also sell stops where traders are looking at this level as a resistance point and they place their sales. They place their sell stops there. So traders place their stops slightly above the zone. All right. And look for the market to go to go down. The stops also create liquidity and sometimes the market will trade slightly above the zone to catch the stops. So that's another thing about trading the level, even though we're trading the correct direction. You got to watch out because liquidity grabs will grab that and then go. All right. So that's one thing you have to watch out for when you're trading this type of a level. So therefore, I, I kind of make sure I get that price action. I usually don't trade the zone just to trade it, but I, I'll show you how to walk a zone. So you could see what happens here. A lot of traders are going to put their entry in there with a stop loss right here. All right. Let me clear that for you. And then what happens next? The market violates, pushes a little higher, higher. Unknowing traders look to go long here. Some of these traders that got trapped here look to get out here because they got the market moved higher against them. So they look to get out here. And then what's going to happen next? 
basically this is a liquidity grab because what happens next guys and actually let me tell you what two, the two things that are really happening here do you really understand what's happening two things that happen here first the move was the stop hunt move all right violating and catching these stop hunts all right and then the next thing was trapping these traders with the, the expectation of a long because we violated this little zone and then that's how traders get trapped not understanding the market and then boom the market goes straight to the downside all right on this big on this little rejection candle we can put our entry in and then the market triggers us in so now that we have three swing points at a b and c a b c we can now find our target for d this is going to be a one to one measured move but before that we always shoot for the most recent bear fractal low as a target so we're always going to look at this level as our first profit target we want to see the market come down to that point because like i told you previously before this is where a lot of things take place a lot of things happen here I, ichimoku this will be a fluctuation level so we want to see the market push to this level and get through it because if it doesn't it it, it creates intermediate waves all right before it creates another fundamental wave which could then go either way so that's why you always want to get through this point and then you can look for your your overall tar profit target all right so how do we find that profit target take your trend based fib extension tool and go from point a b c to find your target so you're going to go from point once you have that three points here so the market moves in end waves like i told you and it's going to move to another end wave and we suspect it to move to this level how do we find that so let's say we started here because this is a b and c and we're shooting for d so now the market pulled up to our level this is where we got into the trade because we got the fractal bounce trade also what ict will call a, a breaker block so we're getting into the trade here how do we find our target well i told you get through this level first and then shoot for your ultimate target which would be down here the one-to-one -one measured move and still creating an end wave as i showed you all right so that's what it's going to be and let's see what the market does the market moves right down to our target boom we're hit it gets through this level here and then it goes to our target one-to-one -one measured move and that's how we find our targets that's part of Ichimoku price observation theory, but we're not talking about that today. So trading these fractal bounces is what you want to really look for. So price fails to come back to the level and then creates a higher bear fractal. This sets the bullish bias, but also be aware that price needs to violate the higher bull fractal for the move to continue. This is a level two and at level two, there is a high possibility of ranging, right? This is the level two. Again, one two and this could be three right now this has to develop and then once we see it develop we'll know it's at a level three or a b c shooting for d or shooting for four that looks like a p right but anyway we would be looking for the market to do this but again at this level again this could be a strong fluctuation point because we need to watch and you could see what the market did inside here it stayed inside this bar and this is a nice opportunity for you to look for the upside move because this is a consolidation move a lot of orders are in here getting ready to explode to the upside and then you can see what happened the market did explode to the upside stayed within this range and then break right up broke right out to the upside so the market breaks structure and now we can look for price to come back seeking the buy side liquidity formed at this level all right so that's what we would look for the market to do and in this case you could see the market does do that and again i told you about your target because this would be one two and three so we always need to get through level two, level two but again we're going to look to enter the market here so the way i enter these zone trades is when the market if the market pushes all the way to the bottom of the zone i put an entry above the market right here for it to go long and it comes back up and triggers me if it takes me out i'm only losing this much all right 
if the market only comes down halfway, then I put my entry at the top and then if I, I'll, I'll lose this much. So the closer I can get to my area where my stop loss is, the less risk I have. So when I, if I wait for price action too much and it goes too far, now you're talking about my stop loss being too far. So therefore I, I don't take the trade. All right. But on this, again, like I said, price mitigates this whole zone. We place our entry at the top of the zone. And again, depending how you trade this, you'd already be in, be in the trade. And again, always think about profit level at profit at level two. And then after you get through level two, then shoot for your one to one measured move again. So now we could see our measured move. We even have price action and everything. You should be in the trade by now. All right. And this would be your stop loss here, the low of this candle that's outside of the zone. And then look to see if the market can reach that point. The market did come back to mitigate that level, like I told you. And then we see what happens. The market pushes higher. Again, we get scared here because, again, I told you this is level two. This is a fluctuation level. And if we don't get through level two, we're going to have very much ranging and intermediate an intermediate price action. And with that rejection candle, I probably put my I what I do, I put my stop loss a little bit below that level because now I'm giving the market a chance to either get through this level, level two or not. And I'll move up. If I get a doji like that, I'm going to definitely put my stop loss up to that level. But in this case, the market reaches this target. So what I do now is either take my profit or put my stop loss here. I want to give this a chance to move even higher. All right. So that's how I would trade this. So that's the fractal bounce trade. That's pretty much what you see. Again, fractals are very vital. Um, all I teach is fractals to people when they join my courses and I talk about these fractals. I've been talking about that fractal bounce trade, which is also, again, the same concept as the ICT breaker block. Pretty much the exact same thing. OK, so again, let's look at fractals real quick as what you can think about fractals. They form strong resistance points. All right. Look at all these resistance points they form. They help you determine the this direction of the market. All right. The market wasn't violating any of these bear fractals here. So you should have never been thinking about short opportunities because we're not violating these lower fractals. So you should be long. Once we start violating these lower fractals and not these higher fractals, then you should be thinking short. The fractals set the structure of the market. The market begins with a fractal. This trend begins with a fractal ends with a fractal. The other opposite direction begins with a fractal, ends with a fractal. All right. And then again, we want to always look for in a bear market, look to bounce off of these bear fractals. Price comes up to mitigate these levels. As you can see, if you think and trade that way, look how many opportunities you would have in this trend. All right. You have slightly missed opportunity there, but Pretty much there, pretty much here, pretty much here, and so forth. So you always want to draw these fractal levels out on your chart and trade those levels as price returns back to those levels. There are strong levels of liquidity, support and resistance. All right. At fractal levels, there's going to be order blocks, everything. They're very vital levels. And in a bull market, the market's going to violate bull fractals, and we want to Watch the market pull back to those levels where we would catch our trades. And again, you're not always going to pull back to every level like here. All right. And then later, the market may come back to this level because, again, these have these have liquidity. These are liquidity levels. And then we're getting pretty much done here, but I want to show you a couple, one more thing. Even though this was news, the market still honored this fractal level. And then honor this fractal level. All right. And then I still would draw this out and look for the market to come up to that level. But you could see how the market still even honored these fractal levels during big news. And then the market continued to the downside. You could very much see the trend because you're only you're never you're not breaking these upper highs, which are these bull fractals all the way down. Guys, 
can't give you any more than that. That's really something important there. So it helps you understand and see the market and trade with the, the, direct, the correct direction. All right. And so when the market is ma making these, breaking these bull fractals, we had a break here, which would have got you to start thinking that we were going to be going to the downside. But again, like I told you, you want to see the market pull back and then go to the downside. You don't want to automatically say we're changing direction. All right. And then the market formed two tops up here, couldn't get through and then violated this level. All right. And now we're, we're definitely thinking bear market, right? We broke structure twice on this way down. All right. So these fractals are vital. Um, here we have a break of structure, which starts the upside move. We broke structure right here. Broke structure, which starts this upside move. This level is a major level because first it sets the directional bias. So now we we're starting to think long, right? It sets that directional bias. Second, it's a high liquidity level. We also expect um, mitigation at this level. As far as the structure break, we need to make sure this isn't a trap and price comes back. We need to make sure we're not trapped and then price drops to the downside. We want to see price come back, bounce off of the level and then go up to the upside. So we don't want to we don't want to jump in any of this because price is going to correct itself. And if it doesn't, you just miss this opportunity. But you know the direction of the market now. You know the structure was broken. You know which way the market is going. So two things we want to see before determining anything. First, we want to see either the market come back, hold this level, or we need to see a higher bear fractal to confirm the directional change has taken place. All right. So we want to see a higher bear fractal than this one. All right. Even if we don't get through this level, let's say we didn't get through this level, but in this case we did, but we got a fractal here. And then the next thing we should see, even if it comes down low below that fractal and creates another fractal, now we have a higher bear fractal. And now we know we didn't break structure yet. So if we have a higher bear fractal, then we suspect the market to be moving higher. That's the fractal trade for you. That's how I trade the market and been showing people this for a long time. So guys, I want to again, thank you for watching my video. Thank you for hopefully subscribing to my channel. Thank you for hopefully giving me a thumbs up if you like this video and hopefully I wasn't too long for you. But guys, until next time, have a great one. God bless. So long.